We're not missing out on far lands or busts. Because we're streaming it right now. This is a Far Lands or Bust live stream for your Monday, January 30th, 2023. We last had an episode. Episode 840. That one. I'm getting I'm getting that fantastic new static feedback. Oh, I wonder if it's this box. I have a headphone uh amplifier monitor and it stopped when I changed the knobs. I I twiddled with the knobs and it stopped. Sorry. Far lands are bust. Hello, everybody on YouTube. Um, nope, it's back. Maybe it's the sunlight. <laughs> Maybe it's my happy light. That is, I mean, the cable is going all the way across it. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, what do you what do you think? We're some sort of professional setup here or something? Uh, but we left off at forty five thousand five hundred twenty seven point six megabytes. And if you've got your woofs ready, I'm ready to begin this Farlands or Bust live stream. Let's go. Woof! There we go. Now we can get out of here. I forgot that I Oh yeah, this is the this was just a hole here that I decided to turn into the a hidey hole. Once a hole, now a hidey hole. And now Wolfie can't seem to get out. Hey, up up all the way. There you go. Into the water. All right. We got Wolfie we got boat. Let's carry on to the west here in Minecraft beta 1.7.3 here in Farlands or bust. It's coming up on February in a couple days. I know one of the years we did Farlands or bust a day or Ramathon during February. But then last year we did it during March. I feel like March was better. Because March is when we actually like started the series. So it actually made sense as like an anniversary. Obviously, here's a spawner. <laughs> what I'm not saying, uh oh, okay. Is that we've right off the bat discovered a spawner. Ooh. All right. Clearly. Oh, that's a deep one. We're going to have to go down to get these chests. Where are they? They're, oh, they must be over here. All evidence suggests that the chests are over here. And I was correct. We can blow them to kingdom come. That's positive. <laughs> we can blast them sky high. Oh. Oh, nearly. We could have blasted them twice. All right, this is, this is going to be all right. Let's, uh... Also make a boat while we're here. Boat insurance. Ooh. All right. So now. Yeah. All right. 
All right, do I have an escape plan? Yes, I do. All right. Are you ready for some football? Woo! Oh, that's the wrong way. Oh, let me out. Oh, he's dying. Why is he dying? We got him. Oh, they're over there, I see. There's probably too much sand. I think it it really didn't damage the spawner at all. I mean, it killed the spawner, but I mean the dungeon. Well, that was an explosive way to start the stream. <laughs> what did I even... I didn't even give him, get anything out of that other than the TNT. I literally... there was nothing else in there for me to take. It serves them right. It serves them right. So how's everybody doing? Anything? New or interesting? Not now, sorry. Ooh. It is, it's very cold here. No snow or anything, but just cold. Frickin' freezing. I think it was down to 20-ish degrees Fahrenheit overnight last night. <laughs> yeah, we did have to scrape off the windshield this morning and it, I haven't had to do that in a very long time and it made a very terrible noise <laughs> it made a very it was it was just like those little you get those little like star starfish uh, snowflakes style like ice particles growing on the windshield it was just those but I got to scrape those off because uh, uh, the girlfriend and I took Juno to another vet appointment again to follow up on last week's. Speaking of dogs, there's Wolfie. Woof. This is a big ocean that we're sailing. Dotted with little desert isles. Uh, yeah, Juno's okay. It's... I mean, this is... these were... we got... last week when we took her to the, like, urgent care place. Uh, she got a blood test and a ure, ure, urolysis. Myolysis? You're you're all you're all yeah that thing. <laughs> um, and it turns out it wasn't or isn't a uh, infection. 
Uh, but they are saying that the signs are showing that it's a uh, kidney. Kidney function. Kidney disease function thing. So she's like not processing liquids efficiently, which means she has to pee more and drink more. But it's like early, it's early stage. Um, which like, it's, yeah, it's hard to know like what that means. <laughs> um, yeah, we went and saw a different vet. Not necessarily to get a different opinion. They pretty much said the same thing. Um, but to just like see what they had to say about it. Yeah, I don't. It's yeah. It's not. I mean, that's the. It's not fluid injection time. It's just like we're looking and we just ordered some special food. Uh, that has less phosphorus and less uh, protein and sodium, uh, which should be better. There's no, like, fix or reversal or treatment. Um, is it? Yeah, it's just like, it's kind of, it's a, it's a bummer. Like, the first vet, the first vet was like, oh, cats do better. Do a little bit better than dogs do with kidney stuff. Dogs usually have about a year. And I'm like, oh, thanks for the good news. But, like, every dog is different. And... You know, whether or not it... changes quickly or whatever... affects... Yeah, I mean, we don't know how... Uh, old Juno is. We're like assuming 12 or so, but I mean, yeah, honestly, for all we know, she could be older than that as a rescue. Oh, excuse me, Juno. That, uh, that was unnecessary of you. No, nope, you're not. Oh, no damage. Good job. Yeah, it's a it's a bummer, but I mean, like, other than like, occasionally, wetting the bed. Um, not not much in the way of like behavioral changes or anything like that. We just gotta like slowly introduce this food. She doesn't take too kindly to food changes. Um. And I was just doing a bunch of research. Before this, like looking at what what foods does it need to be a veterinary uh, 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 prescription food or not, or are there other options? I was also reading on the same site that, like, maybe giving, like, filtered water or, like, instead of tap water, like, drinking water, you know, like, bottled water, will have less minerals and stuff in it, maybe. She'll be an avian dog. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. But I mean that makes that seems to make sense. You want less hard stuff going through the kidneys, getting blocked up. Yeah, kind of a bummer. Just kind of like do do the little change of the diet thing, and you know come back in two or three months to get another blood and urinal urinalysis to see if it's progressing 
Was that a floating island? I mean, that one back there, yes. I had a lady ship glass bottles of Avion overnight to California for her dogs when you worked at UPS. That is not the direction I'm going. <laughs> There was, I mean, in looking at all these, uh, these, these foods, there was one, uh, and the girlfriend had heard of it before, but you can get dog food, uh, special dog food for your dog that's made of alligator. I did not know this. Um, I guess less shocking, but still kind of interesting. You could also get kangaroo. You could feed your dogs kangaroo. I don't. I don't think it's quite time to switch Juno to a gator diet. The yes, a natural food for dogs in the wild. Alligator. I mean, I guess it's because it's like super low fat. Or whatever. I don't. I. I don't know. We did. I just like we were looking at the different foods based on their their phosphorus content and protein content and stuff, and that was one of them. Like the kangaroo, I kind of understand because like kangaroos are farmed and stuff, but I guess also alligators are farmed. I just never figured it would be for dog food. <laughs> Alligators are human food, too, as well. I mean, so are kangaroos. Indeed. So, yeah, that's where that is. Um, so, yeah, like, the, the, the vet, we just had to have her... Uh, um, blood pressure checked before she starts on a medication for incontinence. Um, and her blood pressure was fine, so she could start that medication. And then we just go with the flow, but I still want to... We go with the flow, funny, because she's peeing. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I still kind of want to move my desk down to the basement. The basemante. Of the Alamo. Just to kind of hang out with her down there more. Even if she's still just going to be laying around. Like she normally do. Oh yeah, kind of a bummer, but not, I suppose, totally unexpected, like you guys said, for older dogs. Favorite type of ball? Uh, beach. Woof. 
Indeed. So how how how's everybody else? How about some more uplifting topics? The comet was faint. Oh, that's right. I guess that could be a follow-up, too, to the last episode. I did go out a couple nights ago uh, to try to look for the comet. I said I was going to get out my telescope, but it w would not have been worth it, so I didn't. Um, yeah, at first there was a cloud to the north, so I had to, like, wait till, like, 11 p.m. And then I just went out with some old binoculars. I neglected to remember that to the north is the entire city of Seattle. So the entire northern sky from where I'm at is just a big light dome. Um, so I could I could barely, I'm like, where is the Little Dipper? I could barely make out the Little Dipper. I could only make out the two dip stars. <laughs> um, I mean, I think the handle stars are themselves pretty faint. I don't know what their magnitude is, but yeah, I couldn't make out the handle stars. Oh, what have I done? I've over-encumbered myself. Um, but I was able to approximate where the comet should be. Uh, and through my binoculars, I think, <laughs> I averted vision, think I saw of an extremely faint smudge. It's not a very defined comet with like a tail. Like that one that was a couple years ago um, that you could see naked eye. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely more a target for large telescopes or astrophotography where you can pull a lot more information out of the smudgeness. I do remember hale -Bop. I remember looking outside as a youth. And it was like just from our yard, we could see it. I wasn't in, I didn't have a telescope or I really wasn't into astronomy at the time. But then there was the one a couple years ago, I forgot what it was called. That was really close to the sun, but it was just after sunset. The girlfriend and I went out and went to see it. But then there's also another comet, a more frequent comet, that's uh, heading towards the sun. That's in the, uh, like you can watch it in the SOHO, the Solar Observatory and Heliospheric Observatory uh, satellite. That's like an interesting one. But that, that one's not visible from Earth because it's heading towards the sun. I don't think it's gonna... it's big enough to not be destroyed by the sun, but... That I just read about. On the internet. The internet? <laughs> The internet. <laughs> scoot, scoot. It's the internet. Recall. I, I was thinking it more like internewt, like the uh, the uh, amphibian newt.
Ooh. Spooky places. I should probably not go this way. Ah. There's no holes for me to fall into. Ooh, spooky noises. I told you they were spooky. The music was merely confirmation. Thumbnail. Oh, I thought that was a creeper. Manfredity has a new job in QA testing. What are you testing? <laughs> Video games? Are you trying to break out into the Sunship's place? Ought not wonders what the expected life of the sun is. I think it's like nine billion years and we're about four billion in. Why? Do you have an appointment? <laughs> you're afraid you're gonna miss or something? I think we can make it to a different planet by then. Well, if it's a different planet in our solar system, that's not really going to save us. <laughs> and five billion years is a very long time. I mean, if we do, it's not going to be humans. Homo sapiens, because it only took two million years for us to go from like the first upright out of the trees walking around on two feet animals in Africa. Oh, these are beds. I need boats. So, like. If you're thinking about five billion years, what about just another two million years? <laughs> if we're able to survive that long, what will we become? What sort of crazy weird appendages will we have? I mean, I think that movie AI, um, even though it was a very weird movie <laughs> and not at all really like a popular success, that was pr an interesting approximation of like the robot gets frozen under the ocean for a couple hundred millennia or whatever 
and the beings that come back, you're like, oh, they're aliens. But I think they were supposed to be future what humans evolved into in these spindly, super smart, gelatinous boys. They were robots? Were they robots? I thought they were people. Maybe they were robots. I only saw the movie once, and like I said, it was very weird and strange and hard to comprehend the whole scenario. I thought they looked like the the the, the aliens that were on uh that were making the clones in Star Wars. Whatever those guys were called. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, nerds. <laughs> I keep thinking of Naboo, but that's not right. Okay, well, I guess, according to Steven Spielberg, they were supposed to be evolved robots. So eventually, the rise of the machines, the robots replaced the humans and decided to turn themselves into very skinny, long... They were kind of shiny and glittery, I remember. So maybe that was supposed to be like, ah, they're artificial metallic or whatever. Magical. I mean, I don't feel like robots would have any easier time overcoming the obstacles that we have of, like, materials availability. As far as, like, manufacturing themselves you know what i mean there's like they'd still have to worry about batteries and like lithium and you know whatever we just have the benefit of we can make ourselves we're, we're built we're built out of the stuff that we eat automatically True, and then, then, then the Matrix starts, and then the humans are the batteries. I, I, I mean, the Matrix is the first one, uh, is a good movie, but, like, there was some scientific, like, thing where it's like, actually, humans would make very terrible batteries, because we only put out, like, a 9-volt battery's worth of, like, BTUs of energy. <laughs> like, that would be, that would be a pretty inefficient method of power creation. They added in an along with a form of fusion. Couldn't they have just used the fusion? Right. <laughs> I feel like that would have been a lot better. Science fiction. Doesn't need to make sense.
Bing. When something is the basic concept that makes the movie work, you can get away with it. On the other hand, there are Christopher Nolan films. <laughs> Where the concept is anything but basic and the plot holes are gigantic. <laughs> bad when shows like Star Trek try to explain the translator or warp drive. Yeah, well, I think how that works is that they keep it simple. Where it's like, yeah, it's a warp drive. It's like, yeah, we got gravity. Yeah. Like, okay, even this ship that we found adrift and is out of power and everybody's dead, it still has its artificial gravity working. <laughs> I accept, because it would be hella hard <laughs> to simulate weightlessness on a low-budget TV show in the 90s. Well, yeah, there's definitely stuff that they try to explain that's like, well, that's kind of weird. <laughs> you didn't need to do that, did you? Why they always depend on keep a keep a lock on his 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 keep a lock on his badge, his communicator badge, so we can beam them back whenever we need. But that never works. <laughs> that never works in an emergency situation. O'Brien, keep a lock on the communicator in case we need to beam them back in an emergency. Aye, aye, Captain. Oh, it's not working. I lost the signal. There's too much interference. <laughs> Whoa. Because it's never worked. I don't even think O'Brien can keep a lock on anybody's communicator. Excuse me. Oh. 
Excused. You're excused. I'll allow it. Mr. Cone Shifter Wiggler Dodger dot com. I mean, the Orville also did something where they're like, oh no, we're stuck in the future, or we're stuck in the past. And they're like, okay, why don't we just turn off the warp bubble and go to warp? <laughs> oh yeah, I guess, yeah, that'll work. We travel faster than the speed of light. <laughs> Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Huh? Look at us. Say it again. Look at us. <laughs> oh, Wolfie's in the water already. Thank you very much, Mox, for 58 months in the sub tub with those Bezos bucks. Much appreciated indeed. Hello. -yup. I was going to place the boat, but then I realized I might take fall damage from the boat if I place it and fall into it. Ought not asked. Has anyone seen what can be called a UFO? As a kid, I convinced myself that I did. Like I was in the back seat and we were driving home. It was obviously a night. And I could swear that I saw a light following us. Out of the back. And then when I got out, of the car and looked up the light like continued on and I was convinced that for some reason us our 79 Chevy Caprice was being followed by an alien true cone dodger you hit it you you said it before I even said that it was a Chevy Caprice um Yes, the poor rear glass causing window reflections. Um, also, the like the phenomenon of when you have like cops saying they see UFOs or something is following them. Um, oh, it's turning with me. It's or like pilots even saying that oh, there's a UFO. Look, it's turning. It's turning every time I turn. Well, that's because the parallax. <laughs> of the distant stars in the sky, or Venus, or whatever, changes when you turn. So of course it looks like you're turning, or it's turning, when you're the one who's actually turning. Um, and then also the fact that our house was directly under the, the flight path of airplanes to O'Hare. So when I got out of the car and looked up and saw this light that was following us, it was just an airplane going to O'Hare. <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I was pretty convinced 
I mean, I was very much watching, like, the X-Files and, um, you know, Alien Autopsy, you know. Oh, is this a stairwell we can go up and go to the other side? Let's find out. That, uh, that's a boat. <laughs> That's a shame. <laughs> Wolfie's pushing the boat around. <sighs> That's a shame. All right, let's see. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe. Hey, break on through to the other side. We did it. In the future, people will find those and wonder, wonder what they meant. Elevated bitey boat. <laughs> so yes, as a child, yes. But I definitely realize where that was definitely not the case. <laughs> And again, I also thought my stuffed animals were alive and had feelings and were completely aware and sentient beings. So, I don't think you could trust my, my grasp of reality at that point in my life. I was not aware this was a furry stream. Listen. I thankfully got out of it before it before it turned into that. Oh wait, am I going the right way? Where's my compass? There it is. Life Kelvin and Hobbs. No, but I'm pretty sure I talked about I thought a lot of things were like sentient. Like I got super sad when I lost a balloon, like a helium balloon, and it floated away. Like I felt morally responsible and I killed it. Because I let go of a helium balloon and it flew away into the sky. When in reality, the balloon was thrilled to be free. Isn't helium kind of hard to get? Not back in my day. Not back when I was six years old. No? They're, they're selling helium balloons like they're not completely polluting and destroying the ecosystem at the grocery store. They're all over the place. 
Those mylar balloons, those things never biodegrade and are non-recyclable. Happy birthday! <laughs> Yeah, I remember getting upset about a balloon. I remember getting upset about a snow cone. Because the thing that every kid does, you know, just like the ice ball that has the colored flavoring on it. Like you squeeze the paper cone too hard and the snow part pops out and falls to the ground. I was very upset. That snow cone didn't get to live the life it deserved to live, being eaten as a snow cone. Instead, I had to leave it behind on the ground of the county fair to die a horrible, slow, melty death. My, my friend, the snow cone. Devastated. <laughs> I joke about it now, but it was devastating as a child. That's what I mean. I, I applied sentience to inanimate objects quite frequently. I don't know if that maybe in the modern era, maybe that could have been an indicator of some sort of spectrum of something. I don't know, but and not like, oh, he was like three years old. No, I was like a good seven or eight years old before that started to wind down. I was going on middle school before I decided that I needed to start masking that in order to fit in with the children around me and society's expectations. True, kids programming, yeah, where there's like talking spoons and teacups and stories about toys doesn't really help that either, I guess. <laughs> Did you know there's a very popular cartoon that features an Australian cattle dog called Bluey? I didn't know that. Louis the best. All right. See, I'm I'm behind the times on my. I sh I should be capitalizing this for Juno's uh, Instagram or something. Get some sort of integrated marketing going on. And there's also like a red healer too. From what I've seen of the like images. <laughs> Not that I watch it on the daily. I was bit by an ant when I was younger. It was traumatic. Did you think you had some sort of long-standing truce with the ants? Did you think they were on your side up until that point? Why? I was stung by a bee inside my ear hole. Oh. <laughs> one-upped. You just got one-upped. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now my mom had to go in to get the stinger out. Dang, ear bees, bees. And then when I was older, like in my teens, I took a drink of a soda can that had been sitting outside, uh, and there was there was a bee in the drink, and <laughs> ow, that's how it felt. It didn't sting me. It bit me in the tongue. It bit my tongue, and I spit it out. But it thankfully didn't sting my tongue, because that would have been a lot worse. <laughs> But bees, bees can bite too. Oh, careful, Wolfie! It's a smidge more jittery since you've last joined us. I don't know when, but. The, uh, the offset is now at a quarter of a block. Mark the occasion? Did we? Did we? We made a whole frickin' monument. We we split the planet in half. That's what inspired that season's F3 monument, is that we split a mountain in half. A long time ago you had one of those map things made. No, <laughs> and I haven't gotten back to the person who said they could make one. I just don't think it's possible. Like an overviewer map. Um, Even the, the small one I had to the first F3 monument, the 292-202 monument, I had to take off the website because it was just too big and took up too many files and it made my website go down when too many people went to it. <laughs> it would be interesting, but I just, I don't see how it's mechanically possible. <laughs> yeah, from like the full zoom out, it wouldn't even show up on your computer monitor. Like, it's not enough pixels wide to fit lengthwise. 
or it would just disappear at full zoom out. You need to host it on AWS or something. Well, I'm sure AWS still has like bandwidth and file request limits or charges in that case. But at least your website wouldn't go down. Well, but then I would owe $40,000 in bandwidth charges to Amazon. <laughs> Thus negating any and all money I've ever made on Twitch. Ever. All years. I mean, the problem also is that the world save is 45 gigabytes. So if it's something that I can't do with like a simple map creator on my computer, then I somehow have to get 45 gigabytes to someone else. Punch the microphone! which in and of itself isn't an easy task. Unless I'm going to like mail them a thumb drive or something, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> 45 gigabytes is small these days. Right, but still try to send 45 gigabytes to somebody. Obviously can't email it. I, for free, I should, I should add. Maybe with like the paid version of Dropbox or WeTransfer or something, maybe. But then you gotta sit there and upload 45 gigabytes yourself. <laughs> You could do it fairly easy using a BitTorrent. Well, but in that case, then I would be the only one with a bit, and then the other person would be the one with the torrent. So it would just be a very slow one-to-one, -one, and I would have to keep my computer on. <laughs> So yeah, basically what I'm saying, these are all hurdles. Possibly small hurdles, but hurdles that all add up to prevent another map from happening. Obstacles. Stopping blocks. I mean, maybe I should circle around. We'll circle around on this during next week's meeting uh, and like contact that person who said they figured it out. I mean, I tried to get like a sponsorship with minecraftmaps.net. Like that was their whole bag was to host Minecraft overviewer maps. But it was too big for even their highest tier paid package. And then their website went down when they had some sort of security breach and they don't exist anymore. Yeah, they got hacked or whatever.
Yeah, just draw, just draw. But even a line, like I said, would be inaccurate. I itches, an itchy, get an itchy eye. Hi, eye, eye, Captain. Hmm, I wonder, like, the heat just turned on, and my eye just started itching. I should try to pay attention to that. Maybe there's something nefarious in the vents. Mold. Dead animals. <laughs> Does anyone know what our other corn it is? Uh, off the top of my head, no. I mean, I should stop itching my eyes, what I should do. <laughs> Ow! That was a heart and a half, Wolfie. You dingus. Now you're making me wish I took that bread from that spawner. No, I completely forgot. I completely forgot about that UHC where I got killed by the dogs. Sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. I mean, the other coordinate would be, it's on the, the screenshot, if you could find the screenshot of the F3 moment. It'll obviously be there, but I don't off the top of my head remember. I was going to make something else with the workbench. Oh, a bread. That's right. Nom 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 nom. Indeed. Indeed. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to this Far Lands or Bust live stream. I got to figure out why my eyes are itching. That is curious. That's curious. I'll forget. And then the next time my eyes start itching, I'll be like, why are my eyes itching? Um, but yeah, a wide range of topics today. Hope you enjoyed. Let's go to sleep and then check the new uh, world size. <sighs> Forty five thousand six hundred five point seven megabytes. Not quite forty six yet. Not quite.